After wandering the desert for 40 years, the Israelites reached Canaan around 1250 BCE. Did they destroy the culture and inhabitants in Canaan, as directed by God, or did they assimilate into that culture? Canaan features prominently in the Old Testament, which makes sense since the civilization still existed when the scripture was written. These passages begin with the creation of the universe by God, referred to as Yahweh in older editions, and describe a group of people who are the descendants of Abraham. God promised Abraham that he and his descendants would live in the promised land, known as Canaan. The epistle to the Hebrews proclaims, By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. God chose Moses to lead his people from slavery and handed him the Ten Commandments and other rules under which the people were ordered to live. According to the Old Testament, these people are the Israelites. When the Israelites did not obey God's laws, they were cursed to wander the desert for 40 years. They reached Canaan shortly after the Bronze Age collapse. Initially, 12 spies were sent forth to scout the region, but 10 of them dwindled in their faith. Two spies, Joshua and Caleb, were adamant about their ability to take the land. The Old Testament has several references to giants that dwelt in Canaan, known as Anakim. Joshua and Caleb massacred and drove the giants from the land, allowing safe passage for the Israelites to Canaan. The Old Testament tells how, around 587 BCE, the Israelites managed to conquer the Canaanites. When the neighboring peoples invaded, God decided to help the Israelites by appointing specific leaders, including Saul and David. David's son, Solomon, managed to expand the new Israel into a massive empire, but he worshipped the old Canaanite gods and was cursed. Upon his death, Israel was split between the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. The victory of the Israelites did not last, though, as the region came under attack from the Neo-Babylonian Empire. The city of Jerusalem fell after a siege that lasted between 18 and 30 months. By 586 BCE, a good portion of the kingdom was completely devastated and suffering from a poor economy and dwindling population. Eventually, the Israelites lost control of the Promised Land. According to Judeo-Christian scriptures, the Israelites angered God by worshipping the Canaanite deities rather than Him alone. The legacy of Canaan in the Jewish and Christian scriptures is one of negativity, degradation, deprivation, and overall immorality and licentiousness. The book of Deuteronomy says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. The biblical narrative claims the Canaanites to be descendants of Ham, who were cursed by Noah. So God commanded the Israelites to rid the land of the Canaanites, for they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshipping their gods, and you will sin against the Lord your God. The Jewish and Christian scriptures primarily target several key elements of the Canaanite way of life. One of the first and foremost is the use of idols for religious worship referred to as the sin of idolatry. In Abrahamic religions, such as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the practice of idolatry occurs when someone worships an object in place of God. The Bible draws a connection between the statues created by the Canaanites and this forbidden practice. Another practice commonly seen in the Bible, but for which archaeologists have little evidence, was the sacrifice of children. Historians know that many of the civilizations surrounding Canaan did practice the murder of children two months old or younger, but there has not been much proof to support that the Canaanites condoned the practice. Even so, the Bible refers to the slaughter of youths multiple times, and it is considered one of the great travesties of the savage and sinful Canaan. Finally, many accusations were leveled, claiming that Canaanites practiced forbidden magical arts or spoke to the dead. According to the Judaist rhetoric, God issued the decree for Canaan's destruction on moral grounds. Some scholars take issue with this argument since the biblical story of Canaan's destruction amounts to genocide. In Deuteronomy, God prohibits intermarriage between the two cultures and then orders the Israelites to show them no mercy 
as they break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their idols in fire. Religious groups find the implication abhorrent and provide various interpretations for the need to exterminate the ethnicity. The most popular counter-argument calls attention to the immorality of the Canaanite people as opposed to their ethnicity. In other words, God punished them for their morality, not because of their ethnicity. Archaeological digs in the 20th and 21st centuries poke holes in parts of the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. For example, many believe the Israelites were not a separate ethnicity, but a part of Canaan. Bone fragments and surviving pottery and documents seem to indicate that the Israelites gradually immigrated into the region of Canaan sometime during the 1100s BCE, rather than moving into the area through a mass migration from Egypt. The Canaanite god El was also frequently spoken of in the same breath as the Hebrew Yahweh, and most surviving mythological documents consider them to be the same deity under two separate names. The conflation of the terms El and Yahweh is a fascinating aspect of this tale. Scholars are not sure about the exact etymology behind the name Yahweh, but many believe it was another title for the main Canaanite god El, especially since the Israelites used to be Canaanites. El was the supreme Canaanite god over all the others, the creator of humans and animals, and fathered some of the most important deities in the pantheon, including the gods of storms, death, and the sea. His principal designation was the God of Wisdom, the ancient gray-bearded one who controlled the cosmos. He possessed numerous names, one of which was Yahweh, and his primary name, El, was used in Canaanite and Israelite writings to refer to gods in general due to his influence and power. The leading hypothesis in contemporary times suggests that traders with the nomads gradually introduced the concept of Yahweh to the Canaanites in the south, which was how it spread throughout the Levant during the Bronze Age. Surviving scraps of mythology seem to demonstrate a shift in the way the people of the Levant viewed their gods. While most of the Canaanites were content to remain polytheistic and show their devotion to multiple deities while singling one out as the most powerful, the Israelites, or a people similar to them, were not. They began practicing monotheism and claimed there was one deity responsible for creating the cosmos. Many people in the contemporary Western world have heard of the quasi-mythical Canaan, the Bible references this civilization several times, mentioning when God commanded the Israelites to destroy the Canaanites following the Israeli flight from Egypt. However, the actual history of this civilization does not quite match theological sources. One of the major aspects of Canaan, as it appears in the Jewish and Christian scriptures, is its size. The Canaanite civilization extended across a large region in the Levant, but the Bible only uses the word Canaan to refer to a strip of land near the sea in roughly the same location as contemporary Israel and Palestine. The civilization consisted of a multitude of different peoples from the same ethnic group, but with different cultures. The Judeo-Christian sources portray the Canaanites as depraved, obscene, and degenerate. The deviant outlook is partially true, but religious texts probably exaggerate their banal tendencies to form a villainous image. The Canaanite civilization began during the early Bronze Age as different nomadic groups arrived and settled in the Levant. The Levant corresponds to modern-day Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Israel, and Cyprus. Historians are torn on the meaning of the term Canaan. Most contemporary scholars believe it refers to the Purple Land. The location and geography of Canaan are very suspect as the primary sources are of theological nature, the Bible and the Torah. Recent research has painted a clearer picture of Canaan, extending it beyond the realms of the Jewish Holy Land. Proto-Canaanite settlements developed around 2100 BCE after the collapse of the Akkadian Empire, which allowed new settlements to spring up from its ruins. Yet, there is not much evidence to describe this civilization. Very little is known about Canaan from this period. As the settlements developed urban structures and trade routes, their interactions with their neighbors, like the Hittites and the Egyptians, evolved. The Levant region contained tin and copper deposits that attracted other empires and civilizations. Despite being of the same ethnicity, the Canaanite settlements developed unique cultures based on their proximity to different trading partners. Among these groups were the Phoenicians, Israelites, Ammonites, and Moabites. The expansionist and militaristic policies of the neighbors brought Canaanites under the control of foreign powers most notably the Egyptians and later the Middle Assyrians. 
The Middle Assyrian Empire subjugated the Canaanites until the Bronze Age collapse. A mystery of ancient history, the Bronze Age collapse was probably a combination of environmental catastrophes, the rise of ironworking, an increased propensity towards warfare, and the Sea Peoples. The Sea Peoples were a mysterious group that raised and degraded various civilizations of the Bronze Age. The decline of ancient Canaan during the Late Bronze Age was gradual. Cities slowly weakened and people began to leave to search for prosperity elsewhere. The Canaanite culture slowly integrated into that of neighboring groups such as the Philistines, Phoenicians, and Israelites, where it continued to survive but not thrive. One of these ethnic groups, the Israelites, would become the dominant power in the region where Canaan used to exist. The Israelites did not take Canaan by force, but rather seemed to slowly integrate them into their new culture. The Israelites existed for a while as wanderers or citizens of various settlements throughout the former territory of Canaan. The official term Israel does not appear in living records until the creation of the Merneptah steel, which was inscribed by the servants of Pharaoh Merneptah of the 19th Egyptian dynasty. Since Israel was not a political state at the time, historians believe the Israelites formed a specific ethnic group of Canaanites and other peoples in the Levant. With little archaeological evidence to suggest war or military conflict, it is likely that Egypt sought to suppress the Israelites as they did with the surrounding peoples. The Egyptians chose to list them among their conquered enemies, since the Israelites boasted significant population numbers. Around this time, the Israelites joined the rest of the Levant in the transition to the Iron Age. In keeping with archaeological evidence, one is resigned to accept that the Israelites did not exterminate the Canaanites. However, if one were to follow the biblical narrative, the reasons are quite clear. The people of the Canaanite civilization were barbaric, depraved, and hedonistic idolaters. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Canaanites, check out our book, The Ancient Canaanites, a captivating guide to the Canaanite civilization that dominated the land of Canaan before the ancient Israelites. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.